What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize Arena Breakout Infinite for the best possible performance, and of course, the best visibility, as the default settings are far from perfect now that it's released in early access. If you don't already know how to get early access, you'll find a guide linked down below that goes through some frequently asked questions with this new early access release, as you can't get it on Steam just yet. Answers for all of your questions are linked down below in that FAQ video. This video, of course, will carry on into the future, at least for quite a while, until graphic settings change quite dramatically. This is the early access build, and it should be the same that gets published on Steam when it eventually gets there. So, how do we improve our game, and most importantly, our FPS? Well, we'll start with the in-game settings. I won't be touching on Windows at all. Instead, in the description down below, again, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get the most out of your system, as well as anything else relevant. From the in-game options, in the bottom right down here, head across to the image tab at the very top here, starting with the display settings, make sure these match your display. So ratio, screen resolution should both match your monitor. And down here, you can set a max FPS. Personally, I'd always keep this capped at just below what kind of FPS you're getting in game. Otherwise, this game is going to demolish your graphics card, even on the main menu, eat all of your system resources and stop things from working in the background like streams. So if you're using OBS Studio, for example, that'll stutter, drop frames like crazy, watching YouTube videos, even listening to music, things get super laggy in the background and it's super annoying, especially when games do this. So capping your FPS, at least for me, is a must in this game. But if you're going to be optimizing for the best possible performance and you're only going to be playing the game and maybe using Discord, crank this all the way up to 240 for the best possible performance. I'll keep this at 144 for now. Screen mode should be full screen for the best possible performance, but windowed full screen is just as good, especially on Windows 11. Then, here is where we can get to fixing the blur that you can notice while you're playing the game. DLSS is upscaling. The game is rendering at a lower resolution and being cranked up using AI magic. This is great for performance, but higher FPS numbers does not always mean better especially in a Twitch shooter that requires you to see things in the distance, people hiding behind bushes and stuff like that. If there's any kind of blur or AI guessing that's put into the mix, it's going to become even harder than it should be for you. This is what I would recommend doing. For the overall quality, set this to high to begin with, and the resolution or sampling type should be set to close or close. This isn't exactly defined on what it is on the far right, but you can see we have TSR, FSR, and DLSS. If you need to use upscaling, only use FSR or DLSS. Don't use TSR. It's just a blurry mess. Close is what I'll be using, which should be close to native, I hope at least, which should give you much better resolution, clarity, and ability to see things into the distance. Especially the upscaling methods also add a ton of blur and weird smudging when you're looking around quickly. Trees and bushes have this weird trail behind them, but anyways, that's just upscaling. Moving down, V-Sync should definitely be turned off unless you're getting a screen tearing. Then we have two new options here. I'll start with the second. Enable main screen frame limit. I would recommend enabling this, otherwise I think the main menu has just un capped FPS, it'll still continue to eat away at your graphics card and your performance, and you can't watch YouTube while you're on the main menu if that stutters for you while you're in-game. Enabling this caps your menu to 144 FPS or whatever you have the max FPS set to, I would recommend taking this, especially to save yourself some extra power usage and heat generation to keep your components cooler while you're on the menu, giving them just that little bit of extra headroom to give you better performance in-game. Start graphics card crash debugging is a brand new option. I'm not entirely too sure what it is, but if you enable this, it can help the developers solve crashing issues. So if you're getting crashing in game, enable this. And whenever you next experience a crash, a memory dump of the game will be sent to the developer as well as some other things. And that should help them diagnose what's causing the crash and hopefully fix it in a coming update relatively soon. If you're not experiencing crashing, don't have this on. Set this to off as you'll get better performance. Then scrolling down to these options here. Here is where we can get some major FPS, or at least on most systems. This game seems to be one of two polar opposites. Either your PC loves it and it works great, or your PC hates it and you're going to struggle no matter what, at least for now with this current optimization state. Changing your options here should get you some better performance, but it's not always guaranteed. First of all, resolution, I would always recommend leaving as high, otherwise things are going to be blurry. 
This I would never change. Always leave it at high, especially if you're playing on a native resolution over here by having it set to close for your resolution sampling or upscaling type. View distance should always be set to high to render things as far away as possible. This most likely affects trees and buildings and bushes and not so much people. They should be visible at all distances, really. Having this set to high is the best thing you can do. Bushes and things like that seem to pop in between different LOD qualities. So they go from low quality to high quality and it looks like things are moving. Anyways, that's just a thing that the developers need to get to. View distance high should hopefully help mitigate some of that pop in as well. Anti-aliasing, I'd recommend having set to low. You don't need smoother edges, but if you see that jagged edges start to appear, if things are shimmering or shining weirdly, you can come back and raise this, especially if that distracts you. I personally like extra sharpness, so anti-aliasing being lowered is a good thing for me. Then the rest of these options will somewhat affect your performance and you can play around with them. Light quality for some reason seemed to be set too low when I fired up the game with everything else cranked up to high, so there's probably some extra optimization the developers still need to do with the lighting system, so I'd probably recommend leaving this to low until that is fixed or improved in the future. If you're going to be playing on a high-powered system, I'd recommend keeping most things higher up, which should give you better visibility in-game, but the things that I would lower would probably be shadow quality to medium, post-processing to medium, effect quality, vegetation quality, and shader quality all the way to medium as well, and this should give you a good boost in performance while keeping your vision as good as possible in-game. You can lower these all the way down to low as well, which should give you a little bit better performance. On top of that, if you're struggling to get better performance out of your system. The reason I've left texture quality as high is that most of the time when you have a lot of VRAM available on your graphics card, like six or so above gigabytes, you can keep most of the textures of the game loaded, meaning that you don't need to load lower quality textures as this won't affect your performance in the slightest unless it's too high for what your graphics card actually has. So if you're running a four gig GPU, set this to low, a five to six gig, set it to medium, anything above that, setting it to high is probably more than good enough. Having this too low won't gain you any extra FPS. Having it too high on a low end system may cause you to drop a few FPS. So consider lowering this if you have a small amount of VRAM available or you're running programs in the background that are actively using your VRAM especially. Besides that, we've touched on everything. All of these medium options you can consider dropping to low and that's that. Finally, if we go across to the game tab at the very top after saving our changes, field of view. This does technically affect your performance, but I would recommend changing this to whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. Having this lower means that you're more zoomed in and you can see things in the distance more easily, aim at things more easily, etc. Having this higher, however, gives you a better area of vision. You can see things happening around you more easily and you can hopefully react to things closer to you a lot faster. This is entirely your preference and even though it does affect performance, set this to whatever feels best for you. Then everything else here is just entirely your preference, has no effect on performance in game, except for the performance info at the very bottom. If you have the set to auto display, it'll only show your ping when it's an issue, it'll only show your FPS or packet loss when it's an issue, but you can set this to always show, so you always get these three blocks of information, which I would recommend if you're not comfortable hooking in a third party performance overlay like Rip it to see what kind of performance you're getting in game. So with all of this being said and done, everything else here is fine. Spatial audio is your preference. You can play around with this to see whatever sounds better for you. The audio system still sounds a little bit weird to me at least. Looting sounds a bit weird and stuff like that. But anyways, audio is going to improve as the game goes on in its development cycle. We've covered everything we need to cover here. And with that, we're practically done with everything. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. And once again, if you're interested in playing and you're watching this video super close to its release, you'll find answers to all of your burning questions for Arena Breakout Infinite in the description down below in the linked FAQ video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.